It's my privilege to talk about uh, the first uh, component of this. Vernon will talk about the research questions and, and some of the answers to that. But I'm going to describe for you our uh, curriculum and culture and how we've tried to design it somewhat intentionally to integrate some of the pedagogies that Neil just highlighted. Um, and some of you had a chance, I've had a chance to talk with off and on either through our wonderful speed networking yesterday or just intermittently. And you've probably heard me talk about the fact that we're a mission driven school and that kind of matters. So our mission is, as a Catholic law school, the University of St. Thomas School of Law is dedicated to integrating faith and reason in a search for truth to a focus on morality and social justice. Okay. One way of thinking about that is we want students to acquire the knowledge of the law, skills of a lawyer, and an ethical professional identity grounded in the student's faith tradition with a moral core of service to others. Okay, I want to talk about just two other aspects of that very briefly. Integrating faith and reason, right? Some people may think that's impossible. Okay? So for us, that has two different meanings. One is an intellectual engagement. Right? So if you think of law school as a place where we dialogue about ideas, and at many law schools, particularly secular law schools, faith is not necessarily a welcome chair at the table. We simply bring that chair to the table. We don't ask any other chairs to leave the table. We just add a chair for whatever faith perspective people have. So I think it actually means at one level a richer dialogue about ideas. The other piece, though, is really the formation piece. right? So it's integration of faith and reason is integrating who you are as a person of faith into who you want to be as a lawyer. And not segregating those, but trying to allow you to bring them together in whatever way makes sense to you. And that's really kind of the grounding of our formation idea. Uh, the other thing I want to just talk about very briefly is the search for truth. Right? So for us, what does that mean? We really place a strong emphasis on civil discourse in, in having idea in discussing ideas and, and the way I describe this to our, our 1L students when I have them is um, what I want you to do is express with confidence the ideas you have about something as if they are the truth, right? But also listen with humility, recognizing that you're in a search for the truth. And if you're in a search for the truth, then you don't have the whole truth. Somebody else probably has some truth to share with you and be humble enough to try and hear that, right? And that way we all in theory, are going to learn more and understand the truth better. Okay, so how do we do this? I've got three slides on curriculum and then three slides on culture. And I'm, this is a somewhat uh, traditional approach with uh, first year and upper level and then, and then one dis really distinctive thing, uh, our mentor program in the second slide. So in our first year curriculum, uh, Foundations of Justice is probably the most distinctive thing. Uh, it's a course in which we try to, we, it's an odd structure. We meet for five days before the rest of the first year classes start, two hours a day, every day, um, in sections of about 40. So it's four sections of our first year class, 35 to 40. And that first week, we have them do a fair amount of reading about what law school is, about what it means to be a professional, and about ethical issues that lawyers might confront. And, and about themes that might inform our understanding of justice. And, and we really are setting the table for the fact that we think our mission gives us a slightly different window on what legal education is going to look like because we're willing to have values conversations and, faith, and conversations that might be grounded in faith. Um, so we have these explicit discussions about themes, values that inform understanding of justice. We also have conversations about the role of the lawyer and the values of the professions, and we begin helping them already explore what their identity is going to be. In the second, and the, the written component of that course is two reflection papers, one at the end of the first semester, one with midway through the second semester, that are really connect the dots equations. What is something we talked about in the first week that connects to something that was discussed in one of your other courses? or in one of your experiences here at, law, at the law school. And then the same thing in the second semester. What's something we've talked about this semester that connects to something else that's been going on here? But then we have a project that they work on in groups, which is either an application of these themes to some legislation or an interview with a lawyer where there are uh, kind of a structured interview with four themes we want them to talk about with the lawyer. 
generally, slightly more than half of our students do the interview with the lawyer and then they present these. So they end up hearing different lawyers' perspectives on these. They, they engage them as a, as a group, but then everybody hears the various perspectives when they present them. We have a two-semester learning skills program with a fair deal of formative assessment, and as I'll mention in a moment, there's a third semester in the, in the second year of law school with more of that. And then we have your traditional doctrinal courses, although I think we probably place a little more emphasis on lawyering and professionalism in how we cover that material. For example, I have a property textbook that I co-authored called Property and Lawyering, and as we discuss property rules, we generally aren't focusing just on the appellate court opinions, but the context we're using is you're a lawyer whose client comes in and presents this issue, right? How do you take your understanding of the law to, to help you think about what questions you need to ask, what information you need to gather to help advise them about how the law is going to intersect with their circumstances? We also have Required formative assessment in the fall, everybody gives a midterm and encourage formative assessment in the spring. And this will be happening in the next two weeks for our first year students. We have a mentor externship that takes place all three years. Everybody gets a mentor, so we have 500 mentors for our students. Um, this is institutionally supported self-directed learning, right? So students work with their mentor to identify experiences of what a lawyer does that they'd like to see so they can begin to understand lawyers better and what it means to be a lawyer. They have those observations. They dialogue with their mentor. In the second and third year, our students said, can we get credit for this? We said, no, not in the first year. But in the second and third year, we can. We created a classroom component that went with it. In that classroom component, they have reflection papers. We have individualized engagements with faculty mentors. And particularly this year, we're really placing a strong emphasis on this idea of self-directed learning, of them taking more ownership of developing those competencies. Then in the upper level, we have professional responsibility we offer it as a three-credit course. You have to take it in the second year, either semester. If you have Professor Hamilton, you're going to be writing um, reflection papers, regardless of who you have. And we're probably five deep in PR professors on our faculty. Um, there's a strong emphasis not just on the floor, but on the above the floor questions, the aspirational ethics. We have a third semester of learning skills, again with formative feedback, and then a, a set of other courses that many of you are going to have, right? Clinics, skills courses, externships, lots of experiential learning and simulation courses. One distinctive thing about the clinics is the, the primary clinics we have are interprofessional. So we have law students working with graduate students in social work and graduate students in psychology working on client problems. And they begin to see some of the ways other professions look at situations differently. Um, then we had one distinctive component of the upper level courses are ethical leadership courses. We have an ethical leadership in corporate practice and an ethical leadership in uh, social justice. And those, again, have a, a, a significant amount of reflective opportunity. Um, and uh, really, all of those courses provide that. Um, as of three or four years ago, somewhere between 85 and 90% of our graduates were taking one of the experiential courses. Several were taking multiple. But um, we don't have a, a requirement that you do that, but the vast majority of our students are doing that. And then we have a significant emphasis on formative assessment, even the upper level curriculum. So we did a survey of our faculty, full-time and adjunct faculty, and over half of our upper level courses have more than one assessment. So in addition to a final paper or a final exam, there'll be a quiz or a midterm or, or a couple of reflection papers or something. There's a, over half of our classes have some type of formative assessment. OK, on culture. So we have the benefit of being a relatively new school. This is our 12th year. Um, and we have this distinctive mission. And what has that meant? That, meant, that has meant we've hired to mission. So our faculty are people of faith, accomplished scholars, teachers. Many of them came from other positions where they were tenured or tenure track. They're, and we picked them. And they picked us, really. They expressed interest in us because of their willingness to have conversations about integrating faith and reason, about searching for truth, engaging moral questions, reinforcing a commitment to serving others, fostering a formation environment, reinforcing a positive image of lawyers. We did an assessment of uh, skills and values that our professors emphasize 
gave them a list of five roles of lawyers. Um, and the two that they emphasized the most were problem solver and counselor, and the one that was emphasized the least was hired gun. And just to make sure that that wasn't our own self-perception, we were actually able to have the 1Ls also respond, and they matched up surprisingly with the 1L faculty assessment on that. Um, and then they're willing to model reflection and coach students. We have a very supportive learning environment. 